All right, what's good YouTube? Today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of a different type of video and I'm gonna be explaining basically how to become an esports analyst nowadays in 2023 or beyond. I get this question so much from fans and I think there are a lot of steps that you can take to really help your chances if you really wanna go down this path. And to give you a little background in case you don't know who I am, I'm JP Krez, analyst coach for Optic Texas, the Call of Duty team. So this video is meant for you know esports as a whole, not specifically just Call of Duty. All of the these tools and tips are going to definitely help you in terms of any game that you want to go into, whether it's League of Legends, CSGO, Valorant, whatever. If you want to get into being an esport analyst in one of these games, these are the type of tips that are going to be essential for you if you're trying to break into the scene. So the first thing to do is learn how to code. That's number one rule. Uh, I think it's really beneficial. You know, obviously you can start with Excel, but honestly, if you really want to make waves, the better thing to do is learn to code. I would suggest either Python or R or both. In my opinion, if I did it all again, I would start out with Python. I just think it has a lot more versatility, but really learning to code is actually gonna drastically improve the amount of things that you can do and the amount of creativity you can have when you're starting to create programs or doing anything to try and help a team. So my number one rule for anyone starting out, learn to code. It's just gonna be so much more helpful and it's gonna save you so much more time. I actually started out with Excel once I started doing COD stats back in the day. When I started with Excel, I just really regretted it once I learned to code because I really felt like I was wasting so much time with what I was doing before. So really make sure that you learn to code. It's just going to help you so much. And there's some really good resources online to actually start learning these languages. So for like Python, Free Code Camp is a really good resource in terms of actually starting from, you know, the legit basics. Same thing with Code Academy. These are just really good websites to start building your knowledge of just coding in general. And then once you start actually learning those basics, you can turn them into a sort of beginner project for yourself to start actually completely learning. You know, in my opinion, going along with these is great, but once you actually start creating something yourself, like a project or working on something, that's where your knowledge really starts to ramp up because you're gonna be really interested in starting to create more for that project specifically and starting to ramp it up even more. So your knowledge just keeps growing further and further with the more time that you actually spend doing it. And let's not forget YouTube. YouTube is a great resource to start learning these basics as well. There's a bunch of full free courses online, as you can see here, four hour courses, one hour courses, 12 hour courses. As long as you're like watching these, paying attention while also working directly side by side with this video and starting to practice those tools even more, you're gonna eventually get into that process where you're starting to create your own projects and you can now move on to more advanced topics. So, you know, really starting to work out that base, whether it's through YouTube or through those other courses or both, honestly, if you have the time for it, but really understanding those basics before you start creating something, especially if you've never taken a coding class before, it's gonna be integral to your actual process of learning this. Now, my second tip is just learn the game at a more in-depth level, whether it's CSGO, Valorant, Call of Duty, whatever. Just starting to watch the game more with the intent of learning why teams are doing what they're doing, rather than just watching just to enjoy the game, is going to really ramp up your game knowledge and start to improve what you can do, because you can now really utilize that game knowledge and pair it with that coding skill and start to create something with that. That game knowledge paired with the ability to actually create something is really gonna benefit what you actually create because you're going to be looking at it at a different lens and actually making something that might be useful to a team or to a player because you know the game at a more in-depth level. My third tip is actually just get out there and create something. You know, this can actually really help you in terms of actually starting to learn how to code because if you can really get passionate in a specific project Project where you're creating something, it's really gonna ramp up the speed in which you learn how to code. So I would really definitely pair this with number one, but actually creating some type of program or some type of analysis that you can actually utilize and actually help a team with. You know, there are a lot of niche things that you can probably create that people have never even thought of before, but you never know what teams are actually looking for. And if you can really hit that niche that no one has thought about before, and you can really start making waves in whatever game or title that you're actually trying to pursue. But in this step, obviously you just have to be super creative. Just get into that mindset of what is missing in this eSport? What can I actually feel that can help teams out or help players out because it's not being done right now? So really make sure that you're thinking about these opportunities that you can create and then eventually end up sharing it with those teams or with the community. And when you're starting to actually create these applications or programs, make sure you're actually looking to see if there's a public API out there with data already that you can work with. Otherwise, you're probably just gonna have to take the steps of actually collecting 
collecting whatever type of data you want yourself, but making sure that you actually look up to see if that data is available already, because that's gonna save you so much time in terms of the data process. So for instance, there's actually fully public data for Call of Duty for the 2018 and 2019 season. This is going to be the World War II and Black Ops 4 season. I like to use the World War II data, the 2018 data, as my gold standard because it has pretty much everything you could want, all the scores, all the player stats, all the in-depth map-based stats, such as positional data, weapon data, all that type of stuff where you can make heat maps and other things. This is my gold standard for anyone that wants to try and start getting into Call of Duty data because it's completely public. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it's right here on Activision's GitHub page and it's called CWL data. So make sure if you wanna get into Call of Duty or even just another eSport and just wanna work with some public data, this is a great resource to start doing so. A really good resource for CSGO data specifically is the Oppie Python library. This is a really good resource if you wanna get into CSGO data because it has basically everything that is tracked in the server. So obviously for Call of Duty, we're a little bit more limited with what we are getting, but with CSGO, you can go into so many different possibilities. It's basically endless with the amount of data that they have because every tick in the server is another data point. So pretty much if you wanna get into CSGO or Valorant type data, I think Valorant is a private API that you have to contact Riot. So if you're looking for that tactical based PC shooter, definitely use Oppy for that CSGO data. So as I was saying for Riot based games, Valorant and League of Legends, it's actually a private API. So in order to get access, you'd actually have to apply and basically get access to it from them. So it's a little bit harder for those type of games, but there honestly, there are some websites that you can start working off the data from and start utilizing that data in any type of analysis that you're trying to do. And lastly, if the game doesn't have a public API, which I believe Rocket League doesn't, there are ways to get data through replay systems. So they have public replays like you see in this website, ball chasing. And then what you could do is parse that specific replay yourself through a Python library and then you can get that data and we'll start working with it. So there are some ways to access data without the use of an API, uh, but it's a little bit more time consuming, but it still gets the job done and you still are able to get the data and start working with it. Now, once you're starting to create that actual project or application, I recommend using R Shiny, or I believe you can actually implement it in Python as well, but it's a really good way to create a simple application in R or Python where you can have a bunch of filters like these and you can have a really good visualization so when you're actually showing this to the world and to the public, you can give a really good visual description of what you're trying to convey with whatever the project you're making. And that leads into my fourth step, share it. Share it on social media, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Reddit, you know, browse these communities and share what you're doing. And you just never know who's gonna be looking and seeing those works that you might have published and really might think that's the next benefit or competitive edge to their team that could really help them uh, win a championship or really improve their team. So, you know, you never know if it's a general manager or another coach or someone who finds that work, really sees the value in it and can really just reach out to you, maybe even, you know, offer for you something, but really make sure that you share it so people can actually see the work you're doing. You know, there's no point to actually doing the work if you never share it with anyone to begin with. So making sure that you go through those avenues, whether it's again, Twitter or Reddit, some type of social media where you're actually branching out, showing that work. And if it's really good or really valuable, people might actually reach out to you. Just really develop a brand for yourself and develop your name. Obviously it's going to be a grind. You never know if it's going to be something that you can get paid for, but if you're really about the grind, and really passionate about it and this is what you really want to do you know you're going to take those steps to try and do whatever it takes uh, to pursue that goal and that leads me to my last tip and that is just be passionate with what you're doing you know have some fun with it just be passionate be fully committed if this is what you really want to do because if you're really passionate about it you're going to be working harder for it and it's just going to really ramp up the way that you actually learn things the way that you actually improve or create things so it's really just going to be a whole benefit for you if you're super into it and super passionate about it so those are my five tips you know obviously it's not easy to grind all this out it's going to be a journey and a lot of times it is a decent grind for you to take. Don't think to yourself that you need to have some type of previous experience or a major in college to do this. You know, I majored in labor relations because I thought I was gonna be going to law school and then learn coding uh, by myself basically. So just take those steps if you really wanna do this as some type of career for you. And don't get me wrong, if you do have those things, you know, it is super beneficial for sure. I'm just saying, you know, you don't have to limit yourself if you don't have those qualifications already. You know, all those experiences you might have or things you might 
might create can really build your resume and really get your name out there uh, just as much. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. I really hope this video helped anyone that's pursuing to be some type of eSport analyst, no matter the game. And you know, I just really get this question all the time. So I just wanted to make a video to address it. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.